Hi, in this video, you are going to learn two subtopics, which are cofactors and enzyme inhibition. Many enzymes require help from non-protein helpers for catalytic activity. Let's take a look at this diagram. This is apple enzyme. Apple enzyme is in active enzyme. This is the protein portion, and it requires a cofactor to be functional. This is coenzyme. Let's take a look at this holoenzyme. This holoenzyme is apoenzyme with its cofactors. You look here, the cofactor binds to the apoenzyme and you will get this whole enzyme. And this whole enzyme or holoenzyme is active. The substrate will bind to the active site. Yes. What are cofactors? They are non-protein molecules or ions needed for proper functioning of an en enzyme. Okay, they can be found tightly to enzyme as permanent resident or bind loosely and reversibly along with substrate. We can divide it into two, which are the organic and also inorganic. The organic, the coenzyme. Coenzyme, an organic cofactor for an enzyme generally participates in the reaction by transferring some component, such as electrons or part of substrate molecules. These are the examples of the coenzymes. How about coenzyme Q10? Obviously, coenzyme Q10 is an example of coenzyme. Coenzyme Q10 plays a central role in mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation and the production of ATP. Also, it functions as antioxidants. Other organic molecules such as NAD+, as you can see here, NADP+, ATP, coenzyme A, and vitamins. For inorganic cofactor, they are composed of one or two atoms, usually metal ion, such as zinc ion, magnesium ion, manganese ion, cobalt ion. Certain chemicals selectively inhibit the action of specific enzymes. Most enzymes are inhibited or even destroyed by certain chemical agents. Enzyme inhibition can be either reversible or irreversible. For reversible inhibitors, they form weak chemical bonds such as hydrogen bond with the enzyme. And these weak bonds break easily. After that, the enzyme revert to functional structure these reversible inhibitors, it can be either competitive or non-competitive. Next, let's take a look at irreversible inhibitors. These re ir irreversible inhibitors, they bind tightly and permanently to enzyme. They form covalent bonds. And what happened? the enzyme's function can be destroyed. Just now, I mentioned that the reversible inhibitors can be either competitive or non-competitive. Now, let's take a look at competitive inhibitors. These competitive inhibitors, they have similar shape to the natural substrate or close structural similarity. What happened, they will compete with the substrate for the same active site. Look here. This is the inhibitor, the green color. Now it is binding to the active site of the enzyme. 
you can see that this competitive inhibitor is structurally similar to this normal substrate and fits into the active sites and combined with the enzyme. What happened? It will slow down rate of reaction and then less products will be produced. Over here, it states that competitive inhibitor interferes with active site of enzyme, so substrate cannot bind. You see, it interfere, interferes the substrate. How to overcome this problem? By increasing substrate concentration. A competitive inhibitor competes with substrate for binding to an active site. When the inhibitor occupies the active site, it forms enzyme inhibitor complex and the enzyme cannot react until the inhibitor dissociates. Remember, I will repeat that this competitive inhibitor Usually, they are structurally similar to the normal substrate. Thus, it can fit into the active site and combines with the enzyme. However, it is not similar enough to substitute fully for the normal substrate in the chemical reaction. So, the enzyme cannot convert it to produce molecules or products. An example given here is melanate. Melanate is a three carbon dicarboxylic acid. It is well known as a competitive inhibitor of succinate and a succinate dehydrogenate. As you can see, it has similar shape to the natural substrate which is the succinate. Supposedly, the succinate will bind to the active site of the enzyme and they will form succinate enzyme complex. Later, it will produce the product, which is fumarate. However, if melanate bind to the active site of the enzyme, they will form melanate enzyme complex. No product is formed. Okay, just now you have learned the competitive inhibitors. Now let's take a look at non competitive inhibitors. These non competitive inhibitors, what happens is the inhibitor here, the green color, it will bind with the enzyme at a site other than the active site, or also known as the allosteric site. Such an inhibitor inactivates the enzyme by altering its shape so that the active site cannot bind with the substrate. Let's take a look again at the inhibitor, the green color. The inhibitor doesn't have structural similarity with the substrate. It will bind to this allosteric site. Okay. Again, I repeat that when it binds, it will cause the enzyme to change its conformation. And this substrate cannot bind to the active site. Okay? It prevents the substrate from binding. So what happened? This enzyme cannot function temporarily and it will slow the rate of reaction. As a result, less products is formed. Okay, now let's take a look at this graph. This graph shows uninhibited enzymes. Enzyme with competitive inhibitor and also enzyme with non-competitive inhibitor. As you can see, as the concentration of substrate is increased, the rate of reaction also increases, so product formation increases. The blue color is uh, pre with presence of 
competitive inhibitor. It will reduce the rate of reaction. See over here, you compare it with the green one. It reduces the rate of reaction at lower substrate concentration. But what happens when the, when the substrate concentration is increased? Over here, collision with enzyme increase, so the inhibitor can be overcome and the maximum rate of reaction is achieved. You look here, with this competitive inhibitor, the reaction can eventually reach this Pmax, but it takes higher concentration of substrate to get here. Now, let's take a look at the non-competitive inhibitor. So let's say if there is presence of non-competitive inhibitor, when the substrate concentration increase, maximum rate of reaction is reduced. Usually, non-competitive inhibitors bind to a site other than active site, and we call it the allosteric site. Doing so, it distorts the 3D tertiary structure of the enzyme. So it can no longer catalyze a reaction. Since they do not compete with substrate molecules, these non-competitive inhibitors are not affected by substrate concentration. Okay, you have learned enzyme inhibition can be either reversible or irreversible. You also have learned the reversible inhibitors in previous slides. Now let's take a look at irreversible inhibitors. Toxins and poisons are often irreversible enzyme inhibitors. Example here, serine or nerve gas. The serine gas, it doesn't have color, no order, no taste, so you cannot know if it is nearby to you. It, you cannot see it, you cannot smell it, you cannot taste it, okay? And it targets the nervous system. It binds covalently to the R group of acetylcholinesterase, and this nerve gas alter the shape of the enzyme's active site. Acetylcholinesterase involved in the termination of impulse transmission by rapid hydrolysis of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Uh, this acetylcholine uh, cannot be broken down and um, what happened, it will accumulate in the synaptic lab. As a result, there will be continuous contraction of nerve impulses, which leads to convulsions, paralysis, and eventually death. This nerve gas is very dangerous. Other example of this irreversible inhibitor includes pesticide DDT and parathion inhibitors of key enzymes in the nervous system. Antibiotics are inhibitors of specific enzymes in bacteria. For example, penicillin. Penicillin blocks the active site of an enzyme that many bacteria use to make cell walls. Okay, that is all for now. Thank you.